of Japanese candlesticks. Now, if you notice on your screen, there's a place that says handouts. And I've put together for you what we call the cheat sheet. These are the top candlestick patterns. Not my top candlesticks. These are the top candlestick patterns from candlesticks. Um, it's not individualistic. These are what everybody teaches when you learn pattern recognition. And there are a total of 32 patterns, and these are the 16. So please, at your convenience, click the download button and download that to your device that you're using for class, and then you can move it around. There's no rate, there's no sign up for it, there's no fee for it. Just download it as a JPEG, and you'll be able to use it at your convenience. Now, candlesticks are a form of charting developed by the Japanese rice traders in the 17th century. So it's been around a long time. And candlestick charts were not developed for online financial trading, but they work great for online financial trading. And with the development of online trading and computers, and now with our HTML and Java charts, candlestick charts have become the most used charting system out there. Now, the first thing we have to understand is what makes up a candlestick. Now, whether you're using a line chart, a bar chart, or a candlestick chart, each number is written in stone, it's indelible. It doesn't change, it's historical. So if we're looking at a one hour time frame, that beginning of that one hour is the open. And we would put a line across on our charts for the open. Whether, and if you're looking at a, can, a bar chart, same price. If you're looking at a line chart and you're looking at the open, same price. Whether you're looking at a one hour chart or a six hour chart, it's the same prices. They don't change, just the periods change. So at the close of that one hour, we put another line across. We put a dot at the highest point that that price had gone in that one hour and a dot at the lowest price. We then connect the lines together. And then we connect the lines to the dots. And this gives us our candle. This is known as the body of the candle. And these are the wicks or the shadows of the candle. Now, if you notice, we have candles in red and green. If the price stepped down the ladder from the open to the close, that is a bearish session. So we would fill the candle in with red. If we stepped up the candlestick, if we stepped up from the open to the close, that would be a bullish time period. And we would fill in the candle with green. Now, we use red and greens today, but you could use orange and purple. You could use silver and green, doesn't matter. Silver and blue, silver and gold. As long as you know which one is bearish and which one is bullish, you're fine. Now, a lot of times you'll hear about black and white candles because in the old days, like when I first started trading, we didn't have computerized charting. We did all of our charts by hand. So when we had a bullish session, we would just leave the candle hollow or blank. When we'd have a bearer session, we would use the side of the pencil and color it in the candle so it would be black. So a white candle is today equal to a green and a black candle today is equal to a red. And the reason this is important to know is because a lot of information, especially older information, which hasn't changed, you know, the definition of a candle, actually the names of some of the patterns, we have three black soldiers, three white crows. They are names that have been around for hundreds of years and they were based on the black and white candle system. So three black crows would be what in today's world? Three black crows would be three red crows today. 
three white soldiers would be three green soldiers today. But they don't change the names of the patterns just because time has changed. Now, every candlestick tells a story about what is going on in the markets. And for this, I've put together a presentation I'm going to share with you. And then we'll go on and talk more about candlesticks. The balance between buyers and sellers, you could look at the size and color of the candlestick. When the body of the candlestick is bearish but small, as you see here, there is a relative equilibrium between the bulls and the bears. We can see that because the candle is bearish, there is slightly more selling pressure than buying pressure. As more bears enter the market, the selling pressure increases and the body of the bearish candles become longer under this added selling pressure. This is because the extra selling pressure is moving the price further down. Therefore, the longer the body of a bearish candlestick, the more selling pressure there is. This is the same when bullish candles form. As the sentiment changes and more bulls enter the market, a bullish candle will begin to form. The small blue candlestick shows that there is, more or less, a balance between bulls and bears, but with slightly more pressure from the bullish side. As more bulls enter the market, the body of the bullish candlestick will grow larger as it pushes the price further up. Therefore, the longer the body of the bullish candlestick, the more buying pressure existed in the market when that candlestick formed. The balance between the bulls and the bears can change during the formation of a candlestick. As we can see, sentiment is changing as this candle forms. The body of the candle starts to get smaller and smaller thereby forming the lower wick of the candlestick. In this example, we see that the period started out bearish, but as sentiment changed and the bears left the market, the body of the candlestick started to retreat back towards the upside. When the balance shifted towards the bulls, the candlestick turned bullish, shown by the blue candlestick. The longer the wicks are after the candle has formed, the more dramatic the change in sentiment was whilst the candle was being formed. When there is an equal balance between the buyers and the sellers, this is known as a doji. The doji is characterized by the very small body relative to the wicks. A very small body shows the equal balance between the bulls and the bears. Whenever the bulls manage to push the price up, the bears entered the market to push the price back down again. Then, when the bears succeeded in pushing the price down, the bulls entered and pushed the price back up. Because the balance shifted neither in favor of the bulls nor the bears, the candle formed as a small body with long wicks. This is a doji. Whenever a doji appears, it means there is indecision in the market. A lot can happen during the period in which a candle forms, and the balance in power can shift from one side to the other. Therefore, at the beginning of the candle formation, it could be that the bulls are more in control than the bears. However, during the formation of the candle, sellers could come into the market and change the market sentiment, changing the candle significantly during the time it is formed. What may start out as a bullish candle could end up as a bearish candle. This means you should only ever base a decision on a closed candle. Normally, at the beginning of a new period, one candle opens where the previous candle closed. This does not happen all the time, however. On occasion, when the markets are closed and big news comes out, it can cause an imbalance between buyers and sellers. This imbalance is noted on a price chart by a gap in price when the market opens once again. So far, you have learned that the size of the body of the candle indicates whether the buyers or sellers are in control. That the larger a bullish body is in relation to its wicks, the more the buyers are in control. And the larger a bearish body is in relation to its wicks, the more the sellers are in control. Now that you've seen what the 
development of the body means and what it says to you, okay? Because that's just talking to you. It's, it's telling you about a single session and what is happening. Now, there are certain candle formations that happen with these bodies, like we were referring to a doji. Well, there's some very unique ones that happen that tell us something about the markets. On your screen in front of you, you see what's called a marabuzu. Can you tell me what's different about that candlestick and all the other ones we've talked about? You notice a marabuzu has no wicks. So in other words, it's open and closed, we're at the high and the low. So in a white marabuzu, which today would be a green marabuzu, it's telling us that the market opened and never eased down one drop. It pushed up, pushed up, pushed up, and closed at the highest point it had reached. Well, that's telling you not only are the bulls in control, that the only reason that the price stopped moving is only because the time ran out. So the next candle should also continue that momentum of the bulls. A bearish marabuzu tells you the exact opposite. So remember candlesticks and, and like everything else, there's a mirror image for ups and down, for downs as compared to ups. So a marabuzu, when it happens, tells you something about the market. A marabuzu that appears in the middle of a trend. When a bullish marabuzu appears coming off of the downtrend, tells you that the uptrend, a new uptrend is beginning. When a bearish marabuzu appears at the trail of a downtrend, of an uptrend, tells us that the market has completely reversed and is moving into a very strong downtrend. Then we have the other things. We always have to look at where a pattern has developed in relationship to the candles before it and after, and in relationship to the trend. So it's important not to just say, say ah, I see a marabuzu. You have to look at, or I see a doji. You have to look at it where it's appearing and where the trend is appearing. So now that you have a basic idea of what candlesticks indicate with their bodies and their wicks, let's cut our teeth on some simple, uncomplicated patterns. Now these are fairly common and quite likely to appear before you in a normal trading session. So knowing instantly what they mean and taking the proper action is very important. That's why I gave you that cheat sheet. These are the ones that will appear quite often. So we've talked about mostly standalone candles, what one candlestick tells you. We have the star position, which was the gap. We have shooting stars and inverted hammers, which are the reverse of each other. And then we have my favorite, a harami. Harami in Japanese means pregnant. And a harami, is actually a two session candle and it really tells you something is about to happen now remember it means pregnant so what the definition is the current candle must end up completely enclosed within the body of the previous candle not here and here not with the wicks but the current candle, including its highs and lows, has to be inside the body of the previous candle, just like a child inside a pregnant woman. It's fully encapsulated within that body, not in her head, not in her ankles and her feet, within the body. Now, for it to really be important, the new candle, the enclosed candle, must be the opposite color of the previous candle. Now, Harami is one of the most common candlestick patterns you'll come across. Okay. 
So it's important to recognize it to understand what it means. As you can see here, the body of the small black candle is completely within the confines of the body of the previous candle. Harami is a reversal indicator. Now, I'll be blunt with you, a harami doesn't always live up to its hype. While it is touted as a reversal indicator, you may find yourself disappointed by its reliability. The psychology between a harami is that a possible change in sentiment may be happening. The small candle does not necessarily mean a strong reversal is coming. Often with harami pattern, several days of tight ranges or congestion could happen in between. But be aware of a harami and watch for what they are telling you about market sentiment. But don't have blind faith in them. Don't have blind faith in anything. So now let's talk about some of the other candlesticks. We've talked about the singles, the marabuzu, the spinning tops, the dojis, the hammers, the hanging men. Now we're going to talk about, and I've mentioned to you the three white soldiers and the three black crows. But in the markets, the most talked about, most common, are called the bullish and bearish engulfing candles. Now they are on that cheat sheet that I gave you. Okay. So if you go halfway down, you'll see the bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing. But you'll see a lot of literature, you'll see a lot of people talking about engulfing patterns, and they're very, very important. They are reliable. Engulfing candles are a pair of candles that indicate an impending market reversal, which could be bullish or could be bearish. But remember, a lot depends on where they appear in a trend. And it's very important, the more well-developed the trend, the harder the trend is, when they appear, the more reliable they are. So you have to qualify the appearance of the bullish and the bearish engulfing candle. So I've got a little presentation put together for you, and we'll take a look at that, and then we're going to talk about some of the other patterns involved in candlesticks. Using candlesticks in conjunction with each other can indicate market sentiment by highlighting a shift in power between the buyers and the sellers. Candlestick patterns can therefore provide signals such as a reversal of price action. An engulfing pattern is a strong reversal signal made up of two candlesticks. There are two types of engulfing patterns, a bearish engulfing pattern and a bullish engulfing pattern. There are three main characteristics for spotting these patterns. The market must not be ranging. There has to be an uptrend or downtrend preceding the pattern, even if it is short term. Secondly, the body of the first candle must be smaller than the body of the second candle. It is not necessary for the second body to engulf the actual wick of the first candlestick, although this does create an even stronger signal when it does. And finally, the second candlestick body must be opposite in color to the first candlestick body. For example, if the first candlestick is bullish, the second candlestick must be bearish. Let's have a closer look at the characteristics of a bullish engulfing pattern. You can see in this example, the market is in a downtrend. Notice the highlighted area where the first candlestick of the pattern is bearish, shown by its orange color. The second candlestick in the pattern is bullish, indicated by its blue color, and engulfs the body of the preceding bearish candlestick. These characteristics signal the reversal of the downward trend to the upside and demonstrate how the bears were overpowered by the bulls. Let's now have a look at the characteristics of a bearish engulfing pattern. You can see in this example, the market is in an uptrend. Notice the highlighted area where the first candlestick of the pattern is bullish, shown by its blue color. The second candlestick in the pattern is bearish, indicated by its orange color, and engulfs the body of the preceding bullish candlestick. These characteristics signal the reversal of the uptrend to the downside and demonstrate how the bulls were overpowered by the bears. Tweezer patterns are formed by two candlesticks that have matching highs or lows. As the two wicks have the same height, it has the appearance of a pair of tweezers. A discrepancy of a few pips is acceptable. There are two types of tweezer patterns, a tweezer top 
and a tweezer bottom. As with the engulfing candle patterns, there has to be an up or down trend preceding the pattern. The market must not be ranging. Tweezer tops are formed by two candlesticks that have matching highs and can help spot a trend reversal. You can see in this example that the market is in an uptrend. The upper wick of the first candle shows signs of the buyers losing momentum. The upper wick of the second candlestick in the pattern represents a second attempt by the buyers to continue pushing price up and then being overcome by the sellers. The wicks are of equal length and the highs are at the same level. These characteristics can signal the reversal of the uptrend to the downside and demonstrate how the bulls were overpowered by the bears. Tweezer bottoms are formed by two candlesticks that have matching lows and can help spot a trend reversal. You can see in this example that the market is in a downtrend. The lower wick of the first candle shows signs of the sellers losing momentum. The lower wick of the second candlestick in the pattern represents a second attempt by the sellers to continue pushing price down and then being overcome by the buyers. The wicks are of equal length and the lows are at the same level. These characteristics can signal the reversal of the downtrend to the upside and demonstrate how the bears were overpowered by the bulls. Keep in mind that the bodies or wicks do not have to be exactly the same size or even in consecutive order. Here we see a tweezers pattern with a candlestick in between. The important aspect when looking for a tweezers pattern is two wicks with equal highs or lows, indicating that either the buyers or the sellers were eventually overcome after a trend, indicating a potential reversal. So far you have learned that dual candlestick patterns can indicate a change in trend, but not necessarily an immediate or significant reversal. In an engulfing pattern, the body of the first candlestick must be smaller than the second one, and the color of the second candlestick body must be opposite in color to the first candlestick body. And finally, for a tweezer top or bottom, the wick of the second candlestick has matching highs or lows with the first candlestick's wick. Now I know just this little bit that we've talked about, and believe me, I, I used to give it a one month course on candlesticks. We could talk for that long on candlesticks. But I know it's mind boggling and pattern recognition is very, very difficult because it's memorizing patterns and interpreting what they say. A lot of people swear by them. I use candlesticks, but I don't use it, it patterns. Okay. But like right now, what's going through your head is how the hell am I going to find these, understand these and spend, you know, how am I going to go from one, you know, from not looking at my chart every second to see something develop. Well, there are websites like investing.com. These are information news and technical analysis sites. And if you go to investing.com and just open their charts, their system will automatically drop. I'm just trying to get a marker up here for you. Will drop on there any patterns that have developed. Now you don't want to trade from the charts on investing.com because these charts are just meant for you to look at. And, you know, but what you should do is when you're looking using the ETF chart, ETX charts, is instead of spending your time looking for patterns, you can look because, all, like I said, all the prices are historic. They don't change everybody's price thing. So if you're looking at a 30 minute chart, on ETX and a 30 minute chart on investing.com, prices are gonna be the same. The same thing's gonna be appearing here. So when you see the pattern on investing.com, you can then go circle it on your ETX charts and use it. So you're not spending your time searching out for these patterns that have. Now also in investing.com, you can customize the patterns you want to see. You can take what time frames are important, what types, what pattern indication, how reliable you want, how low, high level or high, low level. And not only will they print them out for you, they'll tell you how many sessions ago they happened, how important they were, and what time frame they are. And so that way you can see all the different assets that you've selected as those candlestick patterns appear. Plus it'll send you out alerts. So for instance, here we see we picked it, only want to see emerging patterns. So you only want to see bullish and bearish engulfing patterns. So here is telling you that Harami bullish patterns 
developed. It's on the one week chart because we've selected one week. It's not a very important, and it's in the current candle, so it's just happening right now. And if you're not sure what the pattern is, if you click on it and open it, it'll give you all the explanation and everything right there for you to see. And if you roll your mouse over, also over the pattern, it's going to open it up and tell you what it means. So it, it's just a tool. There's also scanners you can use. There's all types of ways you can get these to incorporate them into your trading. But remember, always put them on the ETX charts. Because one of the most important things about charts is the speed of the feed you're getting. And the speed, the, the fastest speed you can get are those on your platform because they're already paying to get in this, this the prices instantly. You know, and they're just using that same feed they're using for trading for their charts. Whereas other services and especially free services are using slower feeds. And what's important to you is how fast that data is appearing up on on the chart at the window, only at this price, okay? And so therefore you should always be taking the information off of investing.com, but putting it onto your ETX charts. But it means you can recognize these patterns very, very quickly without spending a lot of time searching them out or you know finding them. Because that for me, that's the hardest problem is seeing them. When somebody says there's a doji, there's a tr three black crows, three white soldiers, there's an evening star, I can I know exactly what it's telling me. It's me finding them. So it's a matter of practice. And once you get pattern recognition down, even if you're not going to trade with it, you'll understand what it's trying to tell you. Because there are lots of ways you can use candlesticks. Like I use them in my indecision strategy. Okay, I will use them to see trends and support and resistance. I use candlestick charts. I just don't use candlesticks to determine particular trades. I don't look for patterns. So keep that in mind. There's lots of ways that you can use these candlesticks and incorporate them into your trading system. But you should know the most common candlestick patterns off the top of your head. So again, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Please click the download button and download and save that cheat sheet I gave you. And thank you for being part of ETX. And again, if you want to see a recorded version of this class, just contact customer support and they'll give you the link so you can watch it again. Thank you very much and have a great trading week. Bye now.